Hello, my name is Ron St. Dennis, and I'm an application engineer with Acuity Solutions. I've been working with Acuity for about four years now, and prior to my time with Acuity, I worked as a manufacturing engineer in the aerospace industry for 34 years. I've been around NX and NX Unit Graphics since 1992. In this video, I thought that I'd provide an introduction to what I think is the most popular and the most cost-effective CAD package in the Siemens PLM suite. NX Mock Advantage. We sell a lot of NX Mock Advantage licenses at Acuity because number one, it's very cost competitive with our competitors' mid priced CAD only solution. Number two, it has the same familiar user interface and model data that can be used downstream with all other PLM solutions without translation or additional interfacing. And number three, it provides enough comprehensive solid modeling, assembly, drafting, data translation, and straight break sheet metal capability to accommodate the design needs of a good percentage of our current client base. Let's have a look at NX Mock Advantage. I wanted to take just a minute to introduce um, you to the uh, NX Ribbon Bar interface. At the top of the screen, we have a menu bar. Below that, we have an application toolbar or ribbon bar. Uh, this is uh, different with every application. Here's the application tab. Uh, right now we're in modeling and assemblies. The user interface is easily customizable. You can, uh, there gives you, there's uh, three toolbars, uh, one on each side and one at the bottom. You can drag and drop from any one of these uh, icons on the screen in an application. Uh, you can also search for all the, all the commands are in here. You can search for all of them. Uh, with a search with a search bar here, uh, you have control over all the tabs and bars that are on the screen. You also have control over uh, shortcuts. There's three uh, separate uh, radial menus that uh, come up with the mouse cursor on the screen, and uh, icons and tooltips control right here. Plus keyboard customization of keyboard. So when you get out of there, if you uh, want to save all your customization, which is a good idea, uh, you can create a user role. Very easy to do that. And uh, that way, uh, when you get out and you come back into one of the uh, out-of-the-box roles, you can get back to where you were with your customization very quickly. So we'll leave this at role advance, so it's more like out-of-the-box, because that's what you'll see uh, when you start. Next, I'd like to demonstrate how easy it is to assemble a uh, three-component assembly and create a, a fourth component in the context of the assembly. So let's start with a clean slate here. I'm going to close all parts. And we're going to start by creating a new assembly. Make sure that we have a millimeters assembly. Give it a name. So uh, since it's a brand new assembly, it puts us in the add component dialog box. So we're going to pick the fan blades as the uh, first component. Brings it into the graphics area, and we're going to we're going to apply that. <clears throat> And it asks if, if we want, uh, because it's the first component in the assembly, it asks if we want it to be a fix, have a fixed constraint. And we'll say yes. So then we're going to go and we'll get the inner cover. And now, uh, because we have constraints turned on here, it'll allow us to constrain it right here in the same dialog. So we're going to do a touch align here. And we're looking for the center line of this, of the inner cover. And the center line of the fan blades. And then we'll do a distance to center this uh, from top to bottom. And we'll set that at 4.75 millimeters. So now that we have this... Uh, 
constrain. We'll apply that. And we'll get the outer cover. We're still in constraints here. We're going to use a concentric constraint, which looks for a circular edge. And this will uh, uh, allow us to uh, not, not only align the center of the hole, but also the face that the edges are. So it's kind of two for one. We'll do more, one more. We'll apply that. We'll get out of uh, the add components. And so here we have the primary assembly, the starting assembly. And we're going to create an adapter and a tube that interfaces with this fan assembly right here. And here's our assembly navigator, and here's what it looks like. All right, we're ready to start building a new component here. We'll do that from assemblies, create new. And now uh, it's asking for a, a body. We don't have one yet because we're going to make one. And we have a, our new component as a fan tube right here. We're going to make this the work part. Go to the part navigator. You notice when we made it the work part, it dims out everything else. Uh, it's, it's still uh, selectable, it's just uh, not as visible. And now that we're in uh, the part navigator, we're going to be creating features for the new part. So the next thing I want to do is I want to use the uh, wave geometry linker to grab a couple of uh, faces from the, from the assembly. So you'll see them right here, two link faces. So now we're going to, uh, we're ready to do, uh, we're going to do an extrude. We're going to create a sketch on a plane. And then I want to, uh, I want to project some curves from the, from the linked body. That'll give us the whole outside. And we're going to sketch on the inside. Notice how uh, it, uh, the sketcher wants to constrain things horizontally, vertically, and it tells you when you're even with another endpoint. So when you come over here and hook them up, you don't have to uh, constrain them afterwards. So, and everything is auto dimension. It tells you at the bottom the sketch is fully constrained with four auto dimensions. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to dimension. We're going to eliminate those auto dimensions by manually dimensioning. And now it tells us at the bottom of the screen that the sketch is fully constrained. So we're ready to go here. And there's our extrusion. Uh, we're going to go 15 millimeters. You can see the little direction error. We could go the other way, but we're on the right side of the assembly. That's what we want. <clears throat> All right. So now, uh, before we go any further, I want to... Uh, I'm going to I'm going to blend these edges in here. Normally I do these at the end because I'm but I'm going to shell this 
five millimeters. That's what I want. I'm going to shell this afterwards. I want the shell. I want the uh, <clears throat> the hollowed out section to follow the blends. <clears throat> and now we're going to make some. I'm going to drill some holes. Notice here that you have a. Uh, 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 a handful of uh, different types of holes. We're going to just use the general hole, but they have uh, screw clearance holes, drill size holes, so they have a pretty good database of, uh, of uh, screwed and um, drilled data uh, built right in to NX. So we're going to do a general hole, normal to the face, simple, and we're going to start with a uh, three millimeter hole. And we're going to go through the body, but we're going to we're going to create a sketch on a plane. And we're going to pick these four here. We'll finish the sketch and they'll drill through. That's good. And we're going to go right back in and create two more seven millimeter. Once again, remember I told you about the, I mentioned these uh, radial menus. So, so this is a, a good opportunity to use that because I want the center point here. And then here. Finish that sketch and we should get two seven mil through the body. We're going to apply that. Let's go back into uh, shading. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I want to shell this. Uh, I want a two millimeter wall. Two millimeter thickness. That looks right. And now I'm going to use some synchronous technology. And I'm going to pull a face. I'm just going to, this is a pretty cool thing. Just grab the face, grab the little arrow. You can pull it right out of the out of the part. We can set it to a distance. I'm going to pull it to three millimeters. I just want to fatten up the bottom a little bit. And then I want to pull this face as well. This one I'm going to pull uh, 20 millimeters. Okay. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to I'm going to put a uh, a tube on the end of this uh, and unite everything together. So I'm going to create a sketch on a face here again. And I'm going to use a profile tool. And with this profiling tool, it's pretty interesting. You can you can create create you can jump from lines to to arcs and make them tangent. So, and now I'm going to uh, dimension those. Need one more dimension here. Okay, that should do it. Now the sketch is fully constrained. We'll finish the sketch.
And now I'm going to uh, sweep along a guide. We're going to grab the inside contour of this. I'm going to select our guide curve. Notice how it's solid. I want it to be so we can we can put an, an offset, two millimeter offset, and I think we're on the wrong side, so we'll go minus two. That looks right to me. And the boolean we want is we want to unite this with the body. So there we have, we've just made a, a tube with a mounting. Now, I want to show this synchronous command called move face. Uh, you notice that it has a face finder here. So this here allows you to select uh, faces that are related to the face you're selecting. Didn't find any. So I, I want to get this, I need to get this in the right orientation. And you notice how the thing just moves that face right around. You can drag the face. This is a really powerful command. Okay, so there we are. So now if we go back to our, make our top assembly the work part there it is I thought I'd take a couple minutes and uh, uh, give you a little idea what the drafting uh, application is like so we're going to create what we're, we're going to create a new uh, drawing file uh, these these are all the templates. Uh, this is uh, pretty easily configurable. I have uh, a one a Acuity tab here that has uh, just a drawing a template for Acuity. Uh, what Siemens seams are in here as well. So these are this is a, a user input that's uh, required for the the title bar or the title block. Uh, when you set up these templates, you can you can uh, determine what you want to come from user input at the time of sheet creation, and uh, what you want to come from part attributes as well as uh, system attributes. We're just going to say uh, close on this for now, and then I usually just step through this. So we we already have a layout in here. Uh, we'll, I want to turn off the center lines for now. You can always add those later. Uh, you can pick any view to start with, and and, and then uh, you can create a, a layout around that. And this is where you pick uh, the other views that you want to add in with based on the uh, base view. Of course, you can always add uh, projected views and uh, base views later. It's all pretty, pretty uh, intuitive. So I thought I'd create a step section line, a detail view, and a couple dimensions. Steps and a step section line is uh, pretty straightforward. We need a vector for the uh, hinge line. can move these around middle mouse button place the view so we'll, uh, we'll add a detailed view to that and we'll change the scale to 2 to 1 And let's put in a linear dimension. Let's do that. 
do that again. And we'll put in a radial dimension. From this little corner radius here. And I think we'll put in a diameter. It's a linear dimension that has the cylindrical output. And then I think we should do a couple of hole callouts. You see here that we have this uh, so these are all the items that you can select on a whole, whole call out that's uh, that happens to be in the, uh, the parameter of the uh, solid and we'll do one more whole call out I want to point out this little pop-up here. You can set uh, a lot of different things in here. Uh, this is a whole call out, so it doesn't have as many. We'll place this, and we'll do one more. Uh, let's see. All right, we'll do this. Uh, You see this uh, this pop-up here. It has uh, the dimension type. It has uh, tolerances, uh, placement of the uh, dimension relative to the uh, dimension line, uh, uh, text above, text below, prefix, and suffix. Sometimes it gets a little. We're up so close here. It's easy to just uh, move it around. So. Uh, that pretty much uh, sums it up. All right, so I thought that I would uh, touch very quickly on the sheet metal application. Uh, there are two different uh, uh, workflows in sheet metal uh, in, in NX. Uh, one of them is uh, to build uh, from a solid, and the other one is to uh, build in a conventional uh, method uh, with a tab and uh, flanges. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to start. I've created a new part here, and I'm going to start with a. Uh, I'm going to actually start with a solid. I'm not going to do anything fancy. Fancy here. I'm not even going to constrain anything. I just want to make a uh, make a solid block. I think that's good enough. And we're going to change to the sheet metal application. So uh, this uh, sheet metal from solid is uh, pretty straightforward. It asks you for a web face. Uh, you can start on this end and work your way over the top, and it'll give you the, it'll give you that. So uh, now, if you uh, want to create one, uh, now now we're going to uh, we're going to hide the extrude that I made. Uh, because I want to, I want to mention design intent and design logic. Uh, all of the NX dialogs that require data input, specifically dimensions, dimensional, uh, have have a group of uh, uh, input parameters or input uh, options that you can use to design uh, to use to build design logic into your into your design and capture the design intent. So uh, the first one is uh, uh, measure uh, a formula puts you into the expression ed editor. So in the expression editor, editor, in a lot of cases, especially on the uh, modeling side, you can actually uh, create uh, uh, 
named variables on the fly when you're when you're setting dimensions in a sketch, primarily in a sketch. And you can build if then logic into this into any one of these. So you can say uh, uh, one of the examples that I always use is that I uh, I create a uh, a pump handle or a uh, valve wheel, and uh, I base the uh, diameter of the uh, the steering the wheel itself and the spokes and also the number of spokes on on the uh, diameter of the whole wheel, and that's pretty that's really easy to do. Uh, it's, it, you don't need to be a a programmer you just need to um, learn the syntax of the if uh, if state and and you can you can create you can set you could you could create a new variable right here right now uh, and and have it uh, pick up the value of any one of these so that's one way the other way is this um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put a, a flange on this and I'm gonna set the length of this based on a measurement off of the other side So it puts you in a measurement mode. Pick a couple faces. And so it just made them equal through a, through a measurement. So let's say okay to that. And now let's go, let's let's uh, let's show our extrude. So this is a very, very, like I said, this is a very simplistic. Uh, example of uh, how design logic is utilized can be utilized throughout an X and it's at every data input field uh, that you have these options so let's change this to five inches now and you'll see that the, the, the sides uh, stayed stayed the same so that's one method of building a, 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 a sheet metal part. Let's uh, let's go to the other workflow, which is pretty common, and that is to uh, go to the sheet metal application, and that is to build a tab. And it's basically done the same as an extrusion. Uh, you can build it on, a, build it in a sketch. You can build it. I'm gonna make keep it simple. And uh, you, your thickness is here. And then of course you create your flanges. There's a whole lot of other functionality here that I'm not going to have time to touch base on, but basically this is how it's done. And then uh, uh, you can get a flat pattern in two ways, you, or more than two ways. You can uh, you can get a flat solid, which looks like this. Actually creates a solid model. Or the other thing you can do is you can get a flat pattern. And it does the same thing, selects a face, and it tells you that it puts it in a view. And that's over here in model views, you'll see it, it's called flat pattern. And this has all your uh, your bin data and everything else. And you can pull this right into a drawing. So, that pretty much uh, sums it up. And... Uh, uh, I will tell you this, this machine that I'm running right now is licensed uh, with the Mock Advantage license. So I, I didn't do anything uh, that you couldn't do with the Mock Advantage, and there's a whole lot more that we didn't even talk about. Uh, so I think it's, uh, for the uh, for the money, I think it's a great deal. Uh, we have a lot of clients that use it. Uh, it it'll mix and match with other floating licenses, and uh, it's, uh, it's a very good entry-level uh, Bye. So, if you're interested in hearing more about NX Mock Advantage, please contact the Acuity sales team. Thanks for watching this video, and thanks for visiting acuityinc.com.